We just finished reading the datasheet of the 1N4007. Now we will import it into LDSpice. Let's first check the, the existing dialed models to see if 1N4007 is there. We go to New Schematic, add a dialed. Right click over the dialed and choose Pick New Dialed. We sorted by part number. We didn't see 1N4007 here. So we decided to import it as the third-party model into LTSpice. We can download the SPICE model from On Semiconductors, which is a manufacturer. We go to this link, we can see this page. So there are four different models available. We can use PSPICE model or SPICE 3 models. So both of them are compatible in LTSpice. PSPICE model has file extension file as .lib. SPICE 3 model has file extension as .sp3. Now we save the lib file into the local directory. We save. We can open it using Notepad in Windows. So this is the syntax to define the dialed behavior. Notice that the model is created on this date. The so syntax starting with a star, that means there are comments. The model type is pspice. The model name is D1 N4007. Model type is D, which is dialed. And after that, there are all parameters to define the dialed. The first method is we can copy and paste .model statement in simulation file. So we copy and paste model statement in LTSpice simulation. We add a generic model into LTSpice. And we copy the model statement in simulation from Notepad as a SPICE directive. The short key is S. We press Ctrl and right click at the dialed symbol. And we replace the value by the model name, which is D1N4007. And we add a voltage source V1. We add a statement for DC sweep over V1 from 0 volt to 2 volt. The step voltage is 0 0.1 volt. After that, we run the simulation. We can get the IV curve by put a current probe over D1. So the y-axis is the current into D1. The x-axis is the voltage of V1 equals the voltage over the dialed. By doing so, we can get the full IV curve of the dialed. The conclusion is the LT SPICE model is working as we expected. Similarly, we can copy and paste the SPICE 3 model here, and it will give the same result. The second method is to use include. We use the same model make sure and make sure it is saved in the local directory. Uh, we use dot .include, the file name, as the syntax. In LTSpice, we use .inc. This is the library file. And that's it. By doing this, we include the library into the whole simulation. The schematic and the simulation setup is the same as before. We run the simulation, we can see the model is working as we expected. It gives the same result. The third method is to use .lib. The syntax is .lib followed by the file name. In the same example, we replace the spice directory by .lib followed by the library file. We can see it gives the same result. The last method is to use URL. In this case, you must have internet connection. It is possible to specify a URL of the, in the following form as a file name. So this is a file name, for example, for a component. We need to include this URL into LTSpice. You can either use .include 
followed by the URL or dot lib followed by the URL. It doesn't matter which one you use, they will give you the same result. If you don't have internet connection, you cannot run the simulation. The error message is shown as this one. So for example, we use dot lib here. We have internet connection. If we run the simulation and the probe at the current of D1, you can see the same result as before. Similarly, you can use dot inc to get the same result. Just to recap, in this lecture, we show how to import the third-party model for intrinsic SPICE devices like dials and the transistors. So there are four different methods. The first method is to copy and paste the entire model statement, the LT SPICE. The second method is to use dot .include. The third method is to use dot .lib. The last method is to include the URL of the model file from internet. The conclusion is that the four methods give the same result. Thank you for your time. See you soon.